Before we move to today's video, I want to give a huge, huge, huge thank you to all of you. We have just gotten to 40K subscribers. That's a huge number. I never imagined that we were gonna be able to get here so fast. Actually, when I started this like channel and producing all of this video, I didn't, I didn't even think it was possible to eventually get to the 100K. But now, thanks to all of the supports, thanks to all of the messages and the amazing community that you guys have helped to build, I definitely think it's possible. Now, this video is a piece from one of my mentorship sessions. This is one of the things that we cover through this like special program that I have where you submit your stuff, I help you out, we build a specific portfolio piece and you learn all of the necessary tools that you need to do amazing things. This one focuses on retopology and some very, very common issues that I see people make. So let's go. Very well, my friends. So let's start with the review here of the retopology that you were working on. Let's set this to live surface and let's take a look. Now, you know that one of the things that we're looking for, right, is proper animation deformation. And usually, yeah, all of this looks good. Uh, it's definitely a little bit dense here as we get closer to the tail. When Once we start getting to this point where, where there's not a lot of, like, points or information, you can start collapsing some of these elements, and this is going to save us a couple of, like, uh, points at the end of the day. So it, it's, it's possible to do this. It's not necessary, right? You can always have a couple of extra polygons. It's not going to kill your project, but you got to be mindful about this. Now, I can see that there's a little bit of a mismatch there on the scales. Again, not the worst thing. Uh, this thing looks good. I do feel like it's a little bit stretched out. Remember that we don't want to make this like super weird triangles. So I'm going to try to accommodate this a little bit better there. It's going to relax the topology a little bit more. And right now I'm seeing that this character has not too many polygons, so we could definitely make it a little bit more intense. Like here, like this is a perfect example of what I was talking to you, man. Like this is not what we wanna have here because it, it extends or it stresses these points too much, okay? So I'm gonna delete some of these points for now. Anyway, so what we wanna do here is instead of trying to, to stress these points too much, we gotta do like what we did right there, okay? So here, for instance, I'm gonna add, I'm gonna delete one face just so that I can add one extra edge right here. And now I just build this to the side, like this. So make sure that that builds properly, there we go. And then from here, we go down. And as you can see, this is gonna be way, way more like relaxed than what we had before. A triangle right there, again, not the worst thing in the world, but I can definitely see that here we are like doing too much with this element. So one thing I like to do here, let's go to our edges. Whenever I see an edge that's like unnecessary, right? I just grab all of those guys and collapse them. That's quite important. It's gonna make it so that we uh, save a little bit of uh, information and, and vertex points right there. Same here, like this edge loop right here. Does it make sense? Not too much. So I'm just gonna delete that one right there and repurpose this ones on this area, okay? And there we go. See how that changes the silhouette here on the on the face? It's not as stretched anymore. It's going to be a lot more relaxed, and it should be able to capture things a lot better. Everything else looks good. Again, don't forget to add a little bit of a relax every now and then, just to give a proper distribution of the polygons. I know that we're still missing all of the teeth and everything, but that's going to be a different subtool or a different like geometry. Yeah, you did a good job here. Love this edge loop right here going across the gums of the character. That's really, really good. Inside of the mouth also looks fine. I don't particularly love this point right here. Like, all of this looks good, but then this, like, eh. Like this one right here. Can you see that triangle? Can you see how that bends in a very weird way? So, we've talked about this before, man. These things are called like non-manifold geometry, and you can see you have a couple of them right here. So that's pretty much Maya telling you, hey dude, this is square right here. I don't know how to shade this because it's it's pushing the triangles or the elements like too far apart. Best thing you can do, triangulate. So here I triangulate as like, yeah, I want you to push that in. Same like this one right here. This one probably wants to go from this point to this point, and there we go. It's, it's not gonna give us the, the cleanest result, I'm gonna admit, it's not gonna be the cleanest result, but it's definitely gonna be a little bit better to what we have right here. And I'm not too worried about that particular deformation point because it's it's very common to get like a like an inter intense deformation at that point. Now here, little triangle, that's fine. Like we don't wanna add any extra edge loops here on the on the back if we don't need to. And, um, and that's gonna make sure that we cover it properly. Chest definitely feels a little bit low, like, 
the just two faces for the whole chest especially because if the if people are going to be closer to the ground floor right they're going to be seeing this part more and, and it's a little bit weird that we have more edges on the top than what we have here on the on the lower portion but again i don't want to bring all of this extra lines to the tail for instance or to the mouth so what i'm going to do is i'm going to delete one of those faces insert an edge loop right there so that we can smooth this out and give it a little bit more resolution right make it look a little bit rounder and once we have that we just triangulate we keep that as the center line very important to always keep a center line so we do that and a little triangle right there and that right there saves us so much polygons and allows us to have a cleaner look now this man this sucks <laughs> i'm sorry but if, if you were delivering this to me and that was your client i would be like dude you're fired like this is not gonna work why is it not gonna work because for the edge loops we need something like this like this clean edge loop that you have right here but we need it to sort of like continue and flow into the leg okay so here for instance i'm gonna make it flow in this way whenever i have this kind of like like a polygons like polygons with a lot of sides this one has like six sides that's an immediate tell to me that something is wrong with my topology and i can simplify it a little bit in this case a single triangle right here like sort of like pushing this this uh issue to another part of the process or the or the character might be the best uh, like idea so having a little bit of a triangle right there i i don't think it's gonna affect us too much because i really want to make sure that this flows all the way around and then here very important we want to have this okay let me let me see what's going on here with the high poly yeah you can see the high poly there's like that thing right there is like way too far into the high poly that one right there so i'm just gonna z v and the w and v to position it or, or push it to the surface or just grab both of them and like a uh, merge let's go back to quadro quadro there we go there we go now immediately i can see that hey we got a mess right here right like that's a mess going on right there so let's add one more edge loop I often tell you guys, and um, it's very important that you don't forget about this, that it's very important to follow this sort of like path of less resistance. If one edge loop will make everything just flow nicer, add the edge loop. It's not going to kill you. Like six or five or ten extra loops on, on a specific point won't break your, your project, and it might allow you to have a, a way cleaner topology, like what we're trying to achieve right here. Now here, let's simplify again. There we go, there we go. Again, I don't love that particular like situation right there. But it's not that bad, okay? Again, we're having this issue with this uh, square right there. And if I take a look at the leg, it's going all the way over there. So I'm going to delete the face for just a second. Add one more edge loop. It's going to help me sort of like hold this shape a little bit better. Just like smooth this all so that we got a more uniform resolution. There we go. And once we have that, we just go back in here and say, hey... How, how can we do it? <clears throat> Sorry. How can we do it so that this thing can continue as normal as possible to this area right here? And again, path of less resistance. Like, don't overcomplicate it. If I can just add an extra edge loop here, right? Like, if I just add one more, like, layer of faces here, and that allows me to have more flexibility, especially on this like heavy deformation areas. Usually, not always, but usually having a little bit more geometry allows for better control of the of the deformation. Okay, so something like that. Again, we smooth this out. Smooth, 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 smooth. We're gonna of course center everything up um, at the end, and there we go. Now, this area right here, this is the knee of the character, right? So this thing is gonna bend quite a bit. So ideally, we wanna have a very clean loop here. So I'm gonna push this triangle one or maybe even two positions down so that we have a very clean edge loop here. So if it's not letting me draw the edge loop, that usually means that there's something here messing it up. Yeah, it's like a, you can see here, it's kind of like a ring right here. So this loop right here, it flows, 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 and then it goes over here and then it stops right there. We want it to connect to this area right there. So I'm actually gonna destroy your knee here, man. I'm sorry about this, but it's gonna be easier for me to teach you how to properly loop this thing around. So let's clean all of this area. Let's just let's start over. So we already have a very clean like loop going around the leg right there. Let's clean that triangle. That loop is fine. Let's remove this one and this one right here. So once we have this, if I take a look at this um, at this knee again, let's go here. There we go. What I want to make sure is that there is at least one edge loop 
that goes perfectly around the knee, okay? And I'm looking at how many polygons I have there on the, on the upper part. So this bends properly. Because that line right there, that's what's going to be bending pretty much. So we're going to do this. Oh, right there. You can see how... This is why I love Topogon. <laughs> because Topogon wouldn't have any issues with this high like amount of polygons. It's not that high. I think it's like 3 million uh, points for this dinosaur. That we have decimated here in your sub tool. But even still, like Maya struggles to analyze the, the position. So I'm gonna follow this, all this around. That one's there, this one's that one. So here's again, this is like a very big phase. It's trying to, to cover too much space, do too much. Right? And then here we have a lot of faces on the inside that we're really not even gonna use. So that's where we gotta be a little bit smarter about this, okay? So here what I'm going to do is as follows. I'm going to stop it right around there. I think that's a good point. And right around here. Because we need to find a way to, to capture all of the information from within the knee in a way that's going to hold its volume, especially when we bend the, the legs. And since this guy is a, it's a biped, right? He, work, he walks on two, two legs. It's very important that we understand that um, there has to be enough definition here. And easiest way to do this, just create an edge loop around these things right here. Okay, since we have the exact same number of like points, it's going to be very easy to generate a little edge loop that goes around this whole thing. And that should be more than enough to hold that shape, capture all of those wrinkles in the normal map, all that stuff, okay? There we go. So all of this, we close that one, close that one, and close that one. And once we have that, we can smooth it out. And the cool thing about this process is that if I need a couple of extra edge loops to make even a, a nicer like band or something, I can just add them. Look at that. They all add onto the same sort of like a place, right? For instance, I can add one extra edge loop right there, especially here for the for like the backside of the of this like calf muscle or something. And that's gonna be very, very helpful for the whole process. This is why edge loops are so important, man. If you if you really do like proper edge loops, it's gonna be a lot easier for you to to follow this kind of thing. Now that we have that. Now we can add a couple of triangles. For instance, here I'm going to add a triangle right there on the bottom. We usually add triangles in areas that are not going to deform as much. So that's why this part of the calf, I'm still going to sort of like try to keep it as clean as possible. If this happens, I sometimes just draw one face right there. Oh, come on. One face right there, and then just push this down. There we go. Now here we can start again simplifying. Like this, this is way, way too many points. And you can see how they're kind of like shifting around. We don't want that. We want to keep them like as straight as possible. So if I see that we're starting to get this sort of like effect, I'm just going to add one extra edge right there. I will keep it straight after the deformation area. But at this point, it might be a good idea to also add like a little triangle there. Okay. Same thing here, like way too many points, way, way too many. So let's start simplifying a little bit so that the flow of topology here flows a lot nicer. Let's do one, two, three. Mm, no, I don't like that. Let's do this instead. There we go. Okay. So that's going to give us a, a nicer, a way, way nicer result. And also a nicer deformation once we uh, animate this, this thing. And then again, smooth, relax, relax all of this area. So all of those polygons accommodate properly to that specific area. See, and, and you did it right here with the, with the heel. Like, that's, that's what we're looking for. That's exactly what we're, we're looking for. I'm just going to add one more edge loop right there because that's another important part. Definitely want to have a little bit more uh, deformation area. And this character, uh, or at least this low poly, definitely feels like, um, like a low poly, right? Okay. We can add one more edge loop right there, one more edge loop right there. Yeah, that looks about right. Yeah, that's workable. That works. Let's take a look at the arm. I'm just going to smooth a little bit there. Let's look at the... Oh, man. <laughs> See, you did a great job on the, on the elbow or the, on the knee back there on the ankle. But then here on the elbow, you, you messed up again. You got to be careful about that. Okay. So let's delete that whole thing. You were doing great. So these are the loops that we want, right? Like the bendy loop that we're looking for. And then if you want to sort of like um, loop around the, the elbow to help it hold its volume... Remember, we create a little edge loop around it. This is what we look at or what we see on the, on the topology course, right? The one that you're following. 
So make sure to follow this specific pattern here. And then one, two, three. And by doing that, we can easily add another division there, for instance, and that's going to help with the whole thing. Cool. So yeah, I think this is ready. I think I think we're good to to try and see how this looks on the bakes. We can improve the hands there a little bit, to be honest. Got one more edge loop there. Yeah, it seems like a couple of pieces are a little bit outside of the bounds, so we might need to do a conform. Now, remember also, my friend, that if this is too low poly for what we're doing, one more thing that we can do here is we can do a smooth, right? So this whole thing, we just hit and say mesh as a smooth. And if we do that, we're going to get a lot more polygons, not too many, right? These are only 15,000 polygons. So if we duplicate this to the other side, it's going to be 30K. I don't think 30K is that much of an issue. I mean, it depends on what platform you're developing for, but it's it's one option that we have here for the uh, for the low poly of the object. Now let's take a look at it without the this thing right here. So let's just do a mesh display, soften edge. And we just want to make sure that in general, we have a, a good flow. So for instance, here, I'm already seeing that this part right here might need the extra edge loop that was following this area. And um, yeah, we might need to add it a little bit later. But this is a good spot to, to try doing UVs, my friend, and seeing if it works, if the bakes work. Go for it. Do that for the next session. We're going to take a look at bakes and the UVs. And if everything's okay, we'll jump into texturings, okay? So that's it, guys. That's a little sneak peek of what we covered during our mentorship sessions. If you're interested in knowing a little bit more about them, please feel free to reach out to me on Discord through ADM, and I'll be happy to give you more information. Other than that, well, don't forget, always learning, always improving. I'll see you in the next one, guys. Bye-bye.